2018 Common Council. Will the clerk please read the quote for the day. Thank you, Mayor. May the message of the holidays fill your life with joy and peace. Best wishes to you and your family during this holiday season. Thank you very much. Uh, will the clerk please call the roll? There are 15 present. Thank you. Um, other person, um, Andy Ross is excused. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. special holiday program presented by Vox that's comprised of Marie uh, Hetzel, Lisa Kepsel, and Brittany Sabaglio. Some of you might know that, but that's uh, Marcus's wife. So girls, please come up. Yeah. 
second. Is the motion to approve? Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to confirmation of mayor's appointments. City Attorney. Uh, mayor hereby submits the following uh, appointments for your consideration. Sheboygan Square Bid Board, uh, David Gass, Scott Drinke, Stephen McCardle, David Hanneman, David Sanderson, Dane Chekolinski, all for terms to end December 31, 2019. Thank you. Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to confirm appointments. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of the appointments, please signify by, no, we've got to call roll. Punch it in. Denied. Motion passes. Next is confirmation of mayor's appointment, city attorney. And pursuant to the requirements of section 7-30 of the Wisconsin statutes, the mayor here will submit for your approval the list of nominations for election inspectors for all elections in 2018 and 2019. Alder Person Wolf, I think we need a suspension on this. Thank you, Mayor. Make a motion to suspend and confirm appointments. Is there Second. any objection to suspension? Why are we suspending? Uh, because they have to be conf uh, confirmed uh, in 2017. Is there any objections? Is there a second? Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Those confirmations are before us. All those, in uh, please call the roll. Eyes. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to the public forum. City Clerk. Thank you. We have four people this evening. Is there Tracy <coughs> Min? Tracy? Yeah. Tammy. Sorry. Sorry, Tammy. state your address for us. 1144 Cherry Lane. Okay, you'll have five minutes. Um, I'm here regarding the parking on Cherry Lane. Um, we are trying to get the parking during school days changed. Um, right now it's 7 till 4, no parking during school days only. Um, my husband and I went around the neighborhood and had a petition 85% of the residents on the street voted yes to have these parking restrictions lifted or changed to permit only. At this time, we cannot have permit only. So we are vote or we are trying to get them changed to no park or to parking on the street during school days. I work third shift. We have a driver in the house that works second shift. He sleeps during the day. And my husband's on a, on a swing shift. We have two spots in our driveway. We have three cars. So one of us has to hike a block, a half a block, to, to be able to park, to be home during the day. I also believe that the, the students at South High who cannot enter any time during the school day other than in the morning or after school hours well, not, I don't believe that they'll park on our road. Kids nowadays, I have three of them, are lazy. They're not going to park in the front. I'm sorry. <laughs> They're not going to be parking off of 12th Street and walking all the way to the other side of the school to park for free. I don't believe that that will happen. If, if a student does park there, they'll be probably leaving at lunch or earlier in the school day and will not return. I, I truly believe that. 
My daughter, she comes home for lunch. She has to walk all the way back around the school to get back in. The only reason she comes home for lunch is because it's free. Um, those are, this is truly how we feel. We believe that the parking will not, the situation won't change as we see it now. Um, if for some reason the loitering, the trash, the, um, every, you know, that stuff changes, we're, I'm prepared to come back here and go for the permit parking. But as, as of this time, we have to do it this way. We've been told by the, the other members here, um, the city attorney, I believe, um, that we have to abolish them before we can get permit parking only. So that's where we stand. We really would like to see these um, parking restrictions lifted at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. The next person is Justin B. <laughs> Justin, can you state your name and address for us, please? My name is Justin Van Evenhoven, and I live at 2205 South 8th Street. Thank you. You'll have five minutes. Thank you. Uh, I'd first like to thank everyone for allowing me to speak this evening. I know I spoke with some of you on the phone, and I greatly appreciate your time and effort into talking to me about the quadricycle ordinance. Um, in addition, I'd like to thank City Attorney for writing up the ordinance and also the mayor for putting all the effort into helping me out. Uh, lastly, I'd like to thank Meredith for being so fast at responding to emails. It's a, a very nice thing to have. So that being said, I believe this ordinance will, not attract, will attract not only the younger population to spend more time in the city, but also the young at heart who wish to get out and try something new. In addition, it will provide tourists who have come to the city an opportunity to see the city like they never have before. Whether the peddlers are pedaling along and drinking a soda while cruising past the farmer's market, or eating ice cream along South Pier, or having a malt beverage on 8th Street, fun can be had by all. The ordinance will provide an excellent idea for people to celebrate their birthdays and bachelor or bachelorette parties, while also providing local companies an additional opportunity when looking for staff and team building events. That being said, the benefits are not limited to those riding on the commercial quadricycles. Many local businesses on the routes will greatly, be, greatly benefit from the ordinance. They will likely be receiving additional business in off-peak hours and also attract riders who may have never visited their establishment before. Not only will this provide immediate sales, but also an opportunity to gain a repeat customer. One could even make the point that the ordinance is promoting being eco-friendly, a green transportation method, promoting exercise and healthy living, and one could even go as far as saying that it's keeping intoxicated people off the road. The list of potential benefits is truly never ending. The last benefit that I'd like to point out is that it shows that we are progressive as a city. We are youthful. We embrace what our city has and we want to show it any way possible. And lastly, we are fun. We're a fun place to live, a fun place to work, and a fun place to spend your free time. That being said, I hope you all vote yes to approving the ordinance and show that we, like so many others in our state, are progressive. Thank you, Justin. The next person is Frank Cozan. Mary? Mary Cozan, please. Mary, could you state your address for us, please? 2829 Erie Avenue in Sheboygan. Thank you. You'll have five minutes. Thank you. I'd like to thank everyone for granting my husband and I this time tonight. I want to tell you I am a regular viewer of the Antiques Roadshow, and I can tell you that on almost every episode, there is somebody who brings, up an, brings an item for appraisal that they found at a flea market, garage sale, or even found in a dumpster. When they get the appraisal that it's worth many, many times more than they paid for it, if they paid it off, they are always astounded and very pleased. But I can't help wondering about the person sitting at home that realizes that's the very item that they sold or gave away or threw away. I am here to uh, share some information or some, my ideas, my opinion about the fate of the armory property to, to the citizens, so that the citizens of Sheboygan 
will not someday repeat what those viewers might have said. The phrase face palm comes to mind, or the Sheboygan phrase, oh for dumb. One argument in favor of the demolition of the armory is the need for more tax revenue in opening up and developing more residential and business property. I'm not going to dispute the need for more tax revenue, but I want to show you four image, images that illustrate a point that I want to make about the size of the armory versus the size of other potential properties. First, there's a picture that was in the Sheboygan paper a few weeks ago of the Indiana Avenue Innovation District. There's a small shape of right here that shows the footprint of the armory property, all the way, the whole block, all the way to the sidewalk. It's a very small part of what's up here. There are other, prop other pictures to show you. The next one is Plan A from the Long Range Plans from the Art Harbor Center Master Plan approved in 2011. This Plan A shows the property that was formerly the Pentair prop uh, business as housing, residential properties. And again, there's that footprint to scale of the armory property. It does cover a, a couple of units of housing, but the majority of the housing is still intact. Plan B showed that property being used for commercial property. And again, there's that, pro that footprint of the armory. And it's a small part of the Pentair properties. Again, I have one more time to show you that first image, the innovation district along Indiana Avenue. But I also wanted to point out that there's an additional proposal to add, quote, hundreds of acres to the South Business Park in Sheboygan. The white space that I have at the bottom, to scale, shows just 200 acres of that possible expansion. And there's that armory property there. That 2.6 acres that the armory sits on represents 1.3% of this part, property. When you add the old Pentair building, the Innovation District along Indiana Avenue, and perhaps more than 200 acres in the South Park Business Park, that percentage goes down and down and down. When you, re when you consider all of those different properties that could be potential for tax revenue, wouldn't he be willing to forego less than 1% of those, that property to preserve the armory, to preserve our heritage? And if not, I would like to know why not. Yes, the 2.6 acres of the armory property has a dollar value when you consider potential tax revenue, but the armory has a far greater value to our history, our heritage, and our community. Don't be the people who know the price of everything and the value of nothing. Don't be the people who are going to make us go, oh, for done, next time there's an election. Help us and preserve this unique and amazing asset. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Frank Corbin? Frank, could you please state your address for us, please? 2829 Erie Avenue. And you will have five minutes. Recent articles in the Sheboygan Press regarding the Innovation District proposed for Indiana Avenue, as well as those, the uh, expansion of the business park on Sheboygan South Side, this, these were the stimulus for our request to put this matter on the agenda. It is undeniable that the city needs to expand its tax base. It is obvious there already has been significant expansion of the tax base. It's already been accomplished, is in the process of being accomplished, and is planned for the future. 
in particular, the Indiana Avenue District, um, from uh, 11th Street to the lakefront, uh, and also including the uh, development of the uh, Tent Air uh, Company property, uh, shows a significant increase in the acres of land that will be developed. The footprint of the armory is only 2.6 acres. This represents a very small portion of tax base expansion. When the footprint of the armory to scale, as was demonstrated before, is imposed on those 200 acres of expansion, it truly illustrates that the armory's contribution to an expanded tax base is negligible. There are reasons to preserve the armory as a venue. Despite claims that the armory, armory duplicates venues, a closer look will show that the new Encore uh, pavilion is an outdoor venue and the armory is an indoor venue, uh, critical in our climate. The assertion that we already have an indoor venue at the Stephanie Wilde Theater neglects the fact that it's fitted with upholstered seats and carpeted aisles and is not what casual informal audiences expect when they attend a rock music or country music concert. Such audiences want to stand, move close to the stage and perhaps even dance, rub shoulders, and talk to their neighbors. The Armory is the venue that suits these events and the audiences they attract. Chad Palaszczuk declared the building is structurally sound. It is, after all, a cast concrete building, building bought, built in 1941 as a project of the WPA. And as such, it is a, a symbol of the United States' resilience and resourcefulness in overcoming the challenges of the Great Depression. The value of this symbol grows in importance as each successive generation is removed from the, that traumatic time. On a personal note, our parents, Mary's parents, my parents, lived through the Depression and shared their experiences with us. Our children never heard their stories, and their children are even less likely to be aware that well, there was a Great Depression at all. The Armory is an inspiring symbol of when America demonstrated its greatness in the face of terrible adversity. What springs to mind is that uh, poster of Rosie the Riveter. Sleeves rolled up, a look of determined on her face, flexing a muscle saying, this is what we're made of, bring it on. The armory building should be spared from demolition. <clears throat> it's potential, it has potential to be developed into an attraction that makes Sheboygan a demonstration and represents a link to our past uh, and our heritage. And it has value much more than its tax revenue. Its value is beyond measure. Yes, the armory is not an albatross. It is perhaps an ugly duckling, but it can be transformed into a swan the same way the Stephanie Wild Center, which barely escaped the wrecking ball, has become a valuable asset to our community. Please don't fixate on expending the tax base, tax base to the exclusion of everything else. Fire pilots, when they fixate on a ground target, will actually fly their plane into the ground, destroying themselves. Consider this so dear to our hearts here in Wisconsin as Packer fans. The Atlanta Falcons, 25 years ago, didn't realize what an asset they had in Brett Favre. They traded Favre to the Packers for a 19th overall draft pick in 1992, and for that pick, they drafted a running back, Tony Smith, whose entire NFL career consisted of 329 total yards rushing and two touchdowns. Uh, that's something Favre could accomplish in one game. So let's not repeat Atlanta's sad history. Let's not subject ourselves to the same anguish and regret that they are filled with every time they think about that ill-considered uh, decision. Please, uh, all, all other persons, Refer to the planning newsletter uh, on, um, on the website. Uh, familiarize yourself with the Harbor Excuse Center me. Plan. Just this, Harbor Center Plan, that little dot represents the armory. And uh, please familiarize yourself with it and consider a proportionate response. Thank you. Thank you. That's it for tonight. Next, we'll go on to Mayor's announcements.
First of all, I'd like to uh, call up Laura Domovich. Laura, please come up to the podium. Laura began her career at the Mead Public Library in January of 1980 in the maintenance department. Prior to that, she worked at Mead on a part-time basis beginning in 1976 with the primary duty of washing all the shelving. Laura's duties were many. She, she cheerfully accomplished every one of them, from greeting customers as she opened the library every morning, delivering packages throughout the building, clearing snow after storms, setting up meeting rooms for programs, cleaning the above and beyond the call of duty as well as restocking uh, the art mat for the Friends of the Mead Library, a job that she thoroughly enjoyed. Laura's love for the library and her work showed every day in her enthusiasm to be helpful. Beyond her regular job assignments, Laura enjoyed helping customers, family and friends how to, and how to use the latest technology that appeared at the library over the years. Some of her fondest memories include the library customer who used to dance a jig for her every day as she opened the doors, being interviewed for a news story as she cleared the snow after a big storm, the third floor addition project, and all the staff that she's come to know as her family for the past 37 years. Laura's dedication to her work helped create an outstanding environment and services that members of the community enjoy in Sheboygan. And we want to wish her the best in her retirement years. Laura, I'd like to present to you this certificate of appreciation for 38 years of dedicated service from January 1st of 1980 through December 31st of 2017. Thank you so much and have a happy retirement. to call up Pete Eich. Pete began his full-time career at the Mead Public Library in February of 1979, although he actually worked at the library since 1974 when he was still in high school. Starting out as a bookshelver and moving on to maintenance staff, he attained the role of Chief Maintenance Supervisor in 1994. It's not much of an exaggeration to say that Pete has literally moved or installed every book, DVD, table, chair, shelving unit, and office configuration in the library at least once over his past 38 years. During the Centennial Building Project in the mid-90s, he and his staff worked tirelessly to keep the library mechanicals functioning and the premises as clean as possible during construction, ensuring that the public never lost access to materials or services. Over the years, Pete has sharpened his handyman skills. He's been called upon to build endless number of unusual custom design items for the library, including furniture, shelving, carts, and dollies. They've also been amazed at his ability to fix almost anything. Pete has cared for the library for many years as if it were his own home. He was always on call, ensuring that things were running smoothly and that all the problems that cropped up were promptly addressed. His dedication to his work has helped to make the library a place where all the members of the community can feel at home and welcome, and I wish him the best in his retirement. Pete, it's my pleasure to present you this certificate uh, in appreciation for 38 years of dedicated service from February 5th of 1979 to December 31st of 2017. Thank you very much, and have a happy retirement. <laughs> the North American Climate Summit in Chicago and signed the Mayor's Climate Charter. What was the most interesting to me at, uh, is the participation of several cities from Northern Illinois and Indiana. This is the region that produces much of the ozone that drifts up over Lake Michigan due to the prevailing wind patterns finds its way to Sheboygan County and other communities <coughs> along the lake shore. This factor along with the location of the EPA monitor located at Kohler Andre State Park has seen Sheboygan County named as a non-attainment area for, water, for air quality. We need to focus on reducing emissions from the regions uh, south of Lake Michigan to reduce that ozone that reaches us along Lake Michigan in Sheboygan County. I participated in the Global Covenant of Mayors and Energy to show my solidarity with the mayors of Chicago, 
Evanston, Oak Park, Park Forest, and Waukegan, Illinois, and also the Mayor of Gary, Indiana. I appreciate their work to accelerate ambitious, measurable climate energy initiatives that will lead to lower emissions and a climate resilient future. Um, we also hope that, uh, that these agreements will lead to those communities meeting or exceeding the Paris agreements. A recent article in the Chicago Tribune ran with the headline, Smog Follows Chicagoans on Vacation to Wisconsin and Michigan. And that really tells the story and we'd like to see that re reduced. The fact that Sheboygan is a Donatainment County has a large financial impact on our manufacturers. They've worked aggressively to reduce their emissions and to comply with the additional regulations that a similar manufacturer in another county is not required to implement. The Sheboygan County Chamber, with many local partners, has led the effort to locate a second monitor in a location that's more correctly uh, situation to collect data on the air in Sheboygan County rather than the air that drifts up over Lake Michigan. This new monitor, uh, they've put a new monitor in place for over three years and the data shows that Sheboygan County is in attainment, but the restrictions on businesses have not been removed. The EPA will not recognize this new information and insist on using the current monitor that will continue to be uh, used to measure Sheboygan's compliance with the Clean Air Act. Our residents and visitors want to know that measures being taken um, so they have clean air to breathe when they partic uh, participate in recre recreational activities along the Sheboygan Lakeshore. Participation with the cities that I've mentioned in the Mayor's Climate Charter is a good first step to accomplish this goal. In the coming months, the provisions from the <coughs> Chicago Climate Charter will be submitted to the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force for inclusion and Sheboygan Sustainability Plan. And to uh, wrap it up, I'd just like to wish all of you in the chambers and those at home a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you. Okay, next we'll continue with the consent agenda. That will include items 2.2 through 2.13. All the person vote. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file all our oaths, accept and adopt all our keys, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of the items in the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Motion passes. Under reports of officers, item 3.1 is RO number 247 of 1718 by the City Planning Commission and General Ordinance number 32 of 1718 by all the person Holshue and Schneider annexing territory owned by the city to the city of Sheboygan and wishes to report this matter was discussed at a regular meeting of the City Planning Commission and recommends the approval of the ordinance. All the person Bellinger. Thank you. I move to accept and file and pass the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Motion passes. Uh, items 3.2 through 3.6 will be referred to various committees. Moving on to resolutions. Item 4.1 is resolution 117 of 1718 by all the persons Wolf and Drawn authorizing retaining outside legal counsel to represent the city in the matter of the Walmart Stores Inc. versus the city of Sheboygan and authorizing payment for said services. All the person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to suspend and pass resolution. Thank you for that uh, motion and support. Uh, under suspension, is there any uh, objections? Why are we suspending? City Attorney? The reason we're suspending is there's a very short turnaround on the uh, answer that needs to be made, and so we need to get her on board right away. Thank you. 
Is there any discussion on the motion then that's on the floor? There's no second. I'll second. Thank you for your help with that. Um, Alder Person Boring. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Attorney Adams, who are we hiring? Who's the outside counsel? And have we used them before on similar dark store cases? Amy Seidel is the person that we've uh, hired. We have not used her before, uh, but she is an expert on these dark store cases. Uh, she came recommended to us uh, by our assessor because he's worked with her on a lot of uh, different uh, Walmart cases and, and other cases as well. Um, and especially for what we, you know, I don't want to talk about it in open session, but what, where we think we're headed as far as strategy, we felt she was the right person. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the court please call the roll for passage? Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Items 4.2 and 4.3 will be referred on the reports of committees. Item 5.1 is RC number 205 of 1718 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. Numa's re referred RO number 243 of 1718 by the City Clerk, submitting a request from the Village of Kohler for City of Sheboygan to construct improvements to the City's portion of Union Avenue and for approval to connect the proposed Aurora development to city water and sanitary sewer mains and recommends filing the document and direct the city administrator to commence negotiations with the village of Kohler relative to intergovernmental agreement uh, for the Aurora development. All the person Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to uh, accept and file. Second. The motion should only be to file. That's okay. Um, That's in the advice of city attorney. Oh. Okay, um, and then therefore the action that was taken by finance and personnel does not need to be ratified? It does not need to be ratified at council. Okay, very good. Then I just move to file. Second. Thank you for your help. Uh, the motion is on the floor to file this document. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is RC number 204 of 1718 by Finance and Personnel to whom is referred resolution 110 of 1718 by all the persons Donahue and Boren approving the project plan and establishing the boundaries for the creation of tax incremental district number 18 in the city of Sheboygan and recommends passing the resolution. All the person Donahue. Thank you. I move to accept, adopt, and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. See no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll? Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Moving on to ordinances. 6.1 is general ordinance number 33 of 1718 by Elder Persons Wolf, Schneider, Bellinger, Bitters, and Nelson, repealing the general ordinance number 76 of 9495 as to eliminate parking prohibitions <coughs> and limited parking on both sides of Cherry Lane between South 12th Street and South 11th Street from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. school days only. Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to pass the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, uh, Alder Person Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'd just like to speak in favor of this uh, um, change as well, this, this ordinance change. Um, you know, I applaud my constituents uh, for the countless public works meetings that they've attended 
the previous council meeting that they've attended. I think that this shows the determination and the passion that the neighbors have um, for change in their, their neighborhood. Um, if this doesn't work, you know, if we remove all the parking restrictions and students end up parking um, in, in their neighborhood, that's okay because then we can take the necessary steps to move forward with a different plan, but to move forward with that plan, which the neighbors would, would like to possibly see in the future, you know, we have to take this initial step and move forward. Um, so once again, I'm just speaking on behalf of the constituents of the 8th district um, and, and encourage and I vote in the adoption of this new ordinance. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alder Person Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm voting against this. I, um, this has come before us once before. There was a large amount of diligence done um, when this ordinance was created. Um, it was done purposefully, and I don't see any reason to um, obliviate it at this point. I will be voting um, not to approve this and to leave the ordinance as it stands, and I'm hoping that we will get the support of other aldermen. But in the meantime, I would like to get the police chief's opinion of this ordinance change, how it may or may not affect that school, this school and that that particular area. Okay, Chief Police, Chris Domagowski, would you like to step up and answer that question? Good evening, so what I shared at the committee meeting was um, essentially some of the comments that have been raised here before, that um, when this issue came up 20 years ago or so, um, there was a large, um, efforts made to try to find out um, what the issues were and address them in a um, reasoned and thoughtful way, I think. Um, beside that, I'm not sure what's going to happen here. It's my belief that we'll probably um, have parking problems there again at some point. Um, beside that, I think um, really this is um, a neighborhood issue, and, and if 85 or 90 percent of the residents that live there want to take that on, then I think that's why we do the things that we do and let them have some input on that. Thank you very much for your comments. Anything else, Alder Person Holshu? No, thank you very much. Okay, next is Alder Person Lewandowski. Yes, I would like to read a letter from the principal at South High School, and it says, Dear Member of the City Council, I'm the principal of Sheboygan South High School and writing this in regards to city parking ordinance for streets in the surrounding South High neighborhoods. The current ordinance on Cherry Drive, Orchard Lane, and South 12th Place is stated as no parking during school hours 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. There is a petition to the council to have these parking restrictions removed. We truly understand the inconvenience this may cause our neighbors and provide caution to those seeking a change and to those who ultimately make the decision for a change. As a school, this ordinance has been significant in helping Sheboygan South High School staff manage the student driving and parking behavior for our students, staff, and visitors. While our parking lot has ample parking spaces, parking on any of the above listed streets will undeniably create issues for both school officials and community residents. The current ordinance was initially passed in 1994 and sustained two other petitions for removing this ordinance in 2006 and 2015. The initial petition for putting this ordinance in place was related to a Lipton area problem associated with loitering, littering, noise line violations, and traffic violations. Maintaining the ordinance as stated will continue to foster a positive community environment as it relates to the 180 days of school we are in session. The ordinance forces both students and visitors to park in our parking lot. Even though our entrance has moved to the west side of the school, parking on any of the above streets will occur as we allow entry and exit to our school through our east doors until 7.45 and after 3.15. We also allow students to exit the building via doors on the east side during lunch from 11 to 12. There may be an assumption that because the main office has moved to the west side of the school that the stated ordinance is no longer needed. 
I can assure you students will gravitate to the parking news areas if allowed for the following reasons. It is closer to the academic sector of our building where students have easier access to their AM classes and a faster exit to their vehicles during lunch and when school ends. Students will be provided with an opportunity to visit their, their vehicles more routinely and not be supervised as we do supervised activity in our parking lot, but will not be able to provide supervision of our community streets if students are permitted the opportunity to park in these locations. We are not responsible for off-school grounds behavior, and this will require residents to report on observed issues to the Sheboygan Police Department and not to the school. Most situations we will not have the grounds for which we can enforce school expectations and our school consequences for poor behavior off-site. If the council decides to rule in favor of the res residents filing for removal of said ordinance, our school recommends for the council to keep the ordinance as stated during school hours with an exception of parking by permit for residents of those streets only. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. All the person born. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I also uh, encourage my fellow older persons to approve this uh, new ordinance. Uh, I think there's been a lot of changes in that neighborhood since 1994. Uh, back then, I think many households were one-car households, and now, as the woman stated earlier, it's two and three cars. Uh, and, I, and I appreciate uh, all of my constituents going through this process and bringing this to our attention. And there's nothing that says if this doesn't work out that it can go back to the system we're in right now or go to the, uh, the permit parking system. But I think uh, the neighbors over there uh, with their lifestyles uh, deserve uh, this ordinance to be changed. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Seeing no other discussion, will the clerk please call the roll. Person Lewandowski? No. Nine eyes, six no's. Motion passes. <laughs> next, we'll move on to matters laid over. Item 7.1. Is our number 241 of 1718 by the City Planning Commission to be reviewed and discuss the tax incremental district 18 boundaries and project plan at the regular meeting of the City Planning Commission November 28th of 17. Recommends approval of both the TID boundaries and project plan. All the person Bellinger. Thank you. I move to accept and adopt. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll. Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 7.2 is resolution number 103 of 1718 by all the persons Donahue, Warren, Wolf, Rinfleisch, and Ross. Approving the amendments to the non-represented employee benefits policy for calendar year 2018, policy number HR 101-18. All the persons Donahue. Thank you. I move to pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll. Fifteen 
15 ayes. Motion passes. Item 7.3 is resolution number 104 of 1718 by all the persons Donahue, Warren, Rinfleisch, Wolf, and Ross adopting the 2018 City of Sheboygan Compensation Program for non represented employees. All the persons Donahue. I move to pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? All the person Bellinger. Thank you. Um, I've got a question and then a comment. And first, my question would be um, to Sandy: does, does the accelerator provision is that included in here? Yes. Okay. Um, what Sandy, please that? use your microphone. Because I, I read I read the document and I did not see that. Is that the equity portion on page eleven of that document? It is included in the document. I don't have the document in front of me to know what page that is. Okay. It's it's one of the exhibits with the merit uh, development reward guide. Okay. Um, I received um, a couple phone calls this afternoon from city employees, and um, they are concerned about this document and how it uh, um, affects their personal situations and uh, they, they brought some things up to me and um, I don't want to discuss their um, individual situations <coughs> in open um, you know on the floor of, of the council so what I would like to do is I would like to hold this uh, for two weeks until our next meeting until I can get the questions uh, that were brought to me answered and um, they can be looked at. I'm not sure if this is intended or unintended consequences uh, that put these people in the situation they're in, but uh, they have some valid points and I, I would like to uh, you know, do my job as an alderman and address these for them prior to approving this. Is there any second to that motion? Um, So we have motion to hold on the floor. Okay, uh, under discussion, I'd first of all like to ask uh, Sandy to explain a little bit about the implications of holding that this at this point in the year. Holding would mean that any increases would not take effect until, or they'd take effect in January, but they wouldn't be entered until after January, which means of approximately 125 individual entries on retro pay. I am not aware of any employees that came directly to me. Uh, I, I guess I don't know who you're referring to, so I'm, I'm uh, concerned about holding it. Um, I, I, just, I, a yeah. minute, just a minute. Uh, all the person Sorensen is next. Uh, I just I, I have a question for. Uh, Person Bellinger, um, just what other questions? Did you have other questions uh, referring to this at all? I'm just curious what all those questions were, so I could. Uh, no, I like I said, I don't want to go into the specifics of the the, the individual's claims or or um, you know how it's going to affect their individual um, situations. What what I planned to plan to do was meet with them and go over this whole document with them and uh, get the questions you know that they have and have them addressed either by Sandy or their supervisor or Daryl or whoever would be the appropriate person to address those questions. Uh, there's a bunch of different questions uh, for their particular situation. And, um, you know, I, I think that it, it warrants holding it. You know, I realize there's gonna be some additional journal entries in, in doing it retroactively, but um, to pass this and ignore the phone calls and the conversation that I had today, um, you know, I, I don't think that would be the right thing to do. And then you were going to ask another question, all the person Bellinger, did you want to do that right now? No, I, I covered it with my previous Thank comments. You. Thank you. All the person Wolf. Sandy, how many employees are there in the city? Oh, total employees about 450. 400. John, how many people called you? I, mean, I, I had two conversations this afternoon. I guess my question would be, if there are, if there's a problem with 
two employees, could we still pass this and we can always go back after research and review and we can always make adjustments later? Absolutely. I guess my recommendation is that we pass this. And if there's legitimate concerns that with the policy that's being put forward, that we would actually make an adjustment later and not affect the process in, at hand. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. All the person boring. Uh, Oliver Bellinger, uh, did these people, uh, did they uh, have any discomfort with with talking to their uh, department head or to the HR director? Um, to, to be honest with you and answer that question, um, they said that <coughs> one person that I talked to said that um, they had talked to their their supervisor, um, their, their former boss, their current boss, they supported it, um, and they you know, tried to get a hold of Sandy, and to their knowledge, um, that hasn't taken place yet. And and I'm just reiterating what was said to me. I'm you know I, I can't you know validate that one way or the other. That's just what was what I was told. Anything other, all person Barn? No, thank you. Is there any other discussion? Okay, we have a motion to hold that's on the floor. Uh, will the clerk please call the roll for holding this document? Four ayes, 11 noes. Motion's defeated. Documents back on the floor for any other discussion? Seeing nothing, would the code please call a roll for passage? Thirteen ayes, two noes. Motion passes. Um, next we'll move on to item 7.4, resolution number 113 of 1718 by all the persons on it here in Warren, uh, expressing the intent of the Common Council of the City of Sheboygan to exercise its police powers in levying a special assessment for 2017, the cost of operating and maintaining off-street parking facilities within parking to district number one. All the person down to you. Thank you, Mayor. With the uh, permission of the council, I would like us to consider 7.4, 7.5, 7.6, and 7.7 .7 in the same motion, which is to pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion of support. So this will include parking district one, two, uh, parking district four, and five. For the record, Mayor, I would note that these uh, Resolutions are essentially identical and come before us, I believe, every year. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 7.8 is general ordinance number 31 of 1718 by all the persons Donahue, Rinfleisch, and Trester, many chapter 130 of the municipal code so as to license commercial quadricycles but do so separately from the current taxi cab regulations. All the person holds you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I um, ask to move and pass this ordinance. Thank you. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderperson Sorensen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd just like to uh, 
Second, uh, um, Mr. Van Hevenhoven's comments uh, prior to the council meeting. I think that this is an excellent opportunity and I give him uh, kudos for his patience and diligence working with uh, members of the Law Licensing Committee, City Clerk's Office, City Attorney's Office, Mayor, City Administrator, all the council members as well. Um, I think that you know, Sheboygan should pat itself on the back that we have a young entrepreneur that is this dedicated and passionate to work through city bureaucracy um, to, to, to get this started. I think that this will be a wonderful opportunity for us to build upon our tourism base. Uh, and I think that there's so many more opportunities down the line. So I would encourage um, an, affirmative, an affirmative vote from uh, my fellow council members. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alder Persons, Baglio. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to also um, voice my support for this ordinance. The increase in tourism as well as um, opportunities for more businesses like this in the future to grow our city in a, in a very um, eco-friendly way. I'm, I'm very much in support of it. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll. Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Next is other matters received after the agenda was posted. City Attorney, Charles Adams. 8.1 is an honor by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2018 to June 30, 2019. That will be referred to the Lawn Licensing Committee. 8.2 is a resolution by Alderperson Wolf authorizing the appropriate city officials to advertise for a request for proposal from qualified vendors for establishment and operation of an authentic German beer garden concession at Kiwanis Park, Area 8 in the city of Chicago. That will be referred to the Public Works Committee. All the person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, and um, we will close out the 2017 year and with a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed?